Hey, what's up everybody? David McCumber here. Welcome to this week's book vlog update video where we are going to be watching behind the scenes of how I drew the lionfish. The lionfish was a lot of fun to draw because it's just a funky, funky looking fish. And I changed up some of the settings for filming so you can see the drawing a little bit better on the iPad. I really uh, thought it turned out kind of cool. So, but some of the things we want to talk about here today, not just focusing on the drawing, but just the book in general. So, uh, originally we were going with a title that was the ABCs, A, B, S, E, A, S, ABCs. Love that title. That was given to me by Charles Breon on Facebook. But, after going on Amazon, there are already books called the ABCs, and there's a game called the ABCs, all spelled the same way. So, it was one of those, if it's too good to be true, maybe it is. So we're kind of back to the drawing board for what to name the book. Um, I kind of like Under the Seas, A through Z's. Under the Seas, A through Z's. Kind of a fun one. Um, kind of rhymes. But, um, yeah, so we're back to the drawing board on that. If you have any ideas for names, shoot them my way. I'd love to hear them. But A through Z's, Under the Seas, Under the Seas, A through Z's. I don't know. I really liked the ABCs, S-E-A-S, -E but so did a bunch of other people who already wrote books like that. Um, I think the other thing that I'm kind of like disappointed on, or I'm, I won't say disappointed on, I guess I'm just kind of wrestling through. Traditionally, children's books are 32 pages. Um, you know, uh, book printing, illustrated book printing are done in, in series of fours. I went through, you know, all of our children's books on the on the shelves. And 32 is just the, the, the number. And with 26 letters in the alphabet, I was thinking, okay, 26 pages. I'd have a couple pages in the beginning, the end, the kind of begin and, and the story. But as I was laying them out, I had the, you know, the image on one side and then the poetry on the other side. It was kind of telling this like cutesy story of each animal. And I was really enjoying writing it. And as I'm laying it out, I, I start putting some of the images in that, that are together. And I'm realizing this book's going to be over 50 pages long because I have the word and the animal. So now I'm going to have to have, when you open up the book, an animal on one side, an animal on the other side. And they don't, a lot of times, like, you know, the A and the B and the C and the D and the E and the F, the animals aren't, they don't talk to one another. I mean, they're not from the same depth of C or same area. So it's like, I, you know, this isn't a science book. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I, I, I want it to be, you know, I don't want to put, you know, a lionfish, which is from you know, Greece or the Mediterranean or Asia with a dugong, which is, you know, from the Antarctic or a krill, which is, you know, from deep in the ocean with an albatross, like they don't go together. And I really wanted to make the book. I, I, I wrote these like pretty cool little kind of Dr. Seussy rhyming poems. And now I'm not going to have enough room on each page. I'm only gonna be able to write maybe two or three lines of text and then but then I'm just I'm like really kind of like discouraged that the book isn't going to be the what I want it to be and I also don't want it to be you know 54 pages and be like super long and um so yeah so then that leads me to the third issue that I'm kind of wrestling through was I was going to self-publish you know, I was going to have to order a couple hundred books, like 500 books, and was thinking about maybe doing a Kickstarter type thing to get some of the capital together to, to pay for the books, do like a pre-sale or something like that, you know, but that's going to be a pretty big investment. And then if the, you know, if the Kickstarter doesn't work out or the pre-sale doesn't work out, I'm kind of, you know, I'm going to have this complete book and not enough money to get the capital 
So just trying to figure that out, maybe going the route of like a traditional publisher. So Melissa has been researching this week, you know, some, some publishers and how to submit to the publisher. So if I go that route, you know, I'm assuming they're going to be pretty strict on the 32 page rule. Um, you know, because they're going to want to kind of stay as a publisher, pretty standard to what most books are. So those are the issues that I'm working through right now. And I figured, um, this video, I, instead of usually I, I speed it up to 200 or 2000% 2, to, you know, boil like two hours worth of footage down to, you know, maybe five minutes. I let this one run a little longer. I only ran it at 500%. So the image that you're seeing is at 500% speed and it's a little bit longer of a video. So give me a little bit more time to, to talk about some of these issues. Maybe you guys could reach out and give any of your thoughts. Um, and But then also I had some questions last week. I wanted to address them as well. So looking at the drawing now, what we're doing here is adding in, you'll notice on this week's video, I did a lot of the coloring and a lot of the detail work on the iPad rather than Photoshop because it's a lot easier to work on the iPad. The way I can turn the page around is just a lot easier to draw. And when you, you know, people may ask why I rotate the page so much while I'm drawing is because when you're drawing with the digital pencil, it's easier to pull and push rather than going sideways. So I rotate the page so I'm always kind of like getting these smooth lines. So I'm pulling or pushing all the time, not going sideways. So a lot of the illustration is just easier to do on the iPad rather than on Photoshop where I'm kind of stuck the way the, the image is. And I think it's easier to see when I draw here rather than doing the, the screen share in Photoshop. So one of the questions that was asked this week was, do I name the animals as I'm working on them? I don't give them a name like, you know, Larry the Lionfish or anything like that. But I do, and there's no audio to any of this drawing, but I do make noises while I draw. So when I'm drawing lines, I might go, you know, especially if they're like repeated lines, like or so I legit make noises like the pen would make. So that was one of the questions. Uh, one of the other questions was, um, what I do is I replicate this kind of old school traditional printing technique in Photoshop. So I'll take the black outline and I change it to two, a cyan blue outline and a magenta kind of pink outline and I overlay them and um, kind of create a black that way. And they're uh, uh, fairly uh, like 85% transparent. And someone asked last week, why do I do that? Well, one, I want this to have the feel of a traditionally printed book, not digitally printed, which everything's printed now, but kind of like a traditional like 1970s comic book or something from like the 60s. And the reason uh, the printing did that was because black ink is super expensive. Like black ink is way more expensive than regular uh, cyan or magenta or yellow ink, which is what things are printed at, you know, uh, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So basically what half tones are, are those colors mixed. So you would mix like cyan and magenta half tones kind of layer them on top of each other to get orange and so the reason they did that for black was black was super expensive so you could print magenta and blue on top of each other and make a version of black and you'll notice here is what i will do on photoshop well, i'll talk about it now and i'll point it out when it actually happens but the i offset them a little bit which is kind of a mistake that happens. If you look at old printing things, you'll notice a lot of times the colors don't line up perfectly. And that's a mistake, but I kind of deliberately make this mistake here digitally 
um, just because I feel like it gives it a cool vintage look. Uh, another question that I got was, you'll see at the end of my video, you'll see the credits roll with executive producers. And someone said, how do I become an executive producer to these videos? That's a great question. In the link below, down in the description, oh, here it goes. Here it goes. So I have a magenta layer and a blue layer. I offset them just slightly and it gives me this black color. So people want to know how to become an executive producer. Well, if you go to my website, you click the link below, I have monthly clubs. I have a sticker club and I have a t-shirt club. And if you join those clubs, one of the perks of the club is an executive producer. You get your name into credits. You get weekly t-shirts and stickers sent to your house. You get a discount code for the online store and you get access to my private Instagram page. So if you've ever wondered who those names are, those are people who are in the monthly clubs. And there's a link in the description on how to be a part of that. So thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you to my executive producers. And if you have any input on any of the things that we talk about, uh, let me know. And if you enjoyed these videos, make sure you click the like to let me know because th that I don't get a ton of views on these or you know, and much feedback. And I put, it's about nine hours worth of work to make one of these videos. So um, I just want to, you know, if I'm going to keep doing them, I just want to know you guys are enjoying them. So let me know if I should keep going with these. Uh, drop me a comment, drop me some likes, subscribe if you uh, want to get updates. And we will see you guys next Monday. Thanks a lot.